Zachary Taylor was our 12th president um, who is probably best known for his role during the Mexican War as a great hero, um, uh, but is probably is less remembered for his um, efforts as being the great compromiser and helping keep the Union together uh, during his early presidency. Zachary Taylor uh, emerged uh, from relatively obscurity as a, a military commander after the war, a war with Mexico in the 1840s. Um, he was able to capture the imagination of the local public. It was one of the first uh, wars that was carried off with a lot of the news reports being sent back uh, almost telegraphically quickly from the battlefield. And so um, these riveting accounts of, of Zachary Taylor uh, and his command, um, overwhelming uh, armies that were much larger, uh, much more equipped at times, uh, made him a folk hero and the likes of George Washington and Andrew J Jackson. Um, so when he came back from Mexico, he was well known to most everyone in the United States. An interesting connection because he was a southerner by birth, um, but his military career and service made him appeal to northerners too. General Zachary Taylor chose Baton Rouge as a home. Um, and, where we are now in the 1820s was one of his early assignments. He was sent here when this was a U.S. garrison, um, on the, formerly on the site of a Spanish fort, uh, after we were, became part of the United States. And so he helped supervise these buildings behind me. Um, we call them now the Pentagon Barracks. But originally they were garrisoned for soldiers. This was an, uh, an outpost on the frontier. He later came back here as commander in the 1840s. And that's when we really know more about his life here. Uh, his, he and his wife had a small cottage near this site and they had close friends. So when he came back um, after his war service in the war with Mexico, as a well-known popular figure, everyone in Baton Rouge uh, could claim him. He was someone that they knew. He was their neighbor. They called him old rough and ready because he would do anything that he made his troops do. Uh, if he had to sleep out in the field, he would do it. After the war with Mexico, um, there was a great deal of interest to um, uh, encourage Taylor to run uh, for president. Uh, he had never really affiliated with any political party. He'd been a military man. Um, and so people were unsure which party he would align himself with. Um, he started writing a series of letters from Baton Rouge outlining the things that he believed in. And those kinds of things uh, spoke to a different, larger audience. It was a way to um, uh, garner support in a time before media. Uh, and people read those letters, uh, date mark Baton Rouge, and learned what Taylor felt about all the major issues of the day. And he generally became uh, associated more with the Whig party and became that candidate. Even as a Whig, and even as a Whig president, he was always uh, kind of independent and was willing to step on the toes of his own party members. Zachary Taylor's accomplishments as president were rather short-lived. Uh, unfortunately, his, uh, his career, his term of office was very short. Um, the major things that happened while he was in office was he was able to prevent uh, disunion. Um, he was able to convince uh, rather strong-handedly strong uh, to keep the North and South together early. He'd fought for a 40-year military career um, as an Army soldier, so he believed in the Union. Um, even though he was a Southerner, he owned a plantation near here and had slaves, he did not believe that slavery itself should be um, the deciding factor to sever the Union. Um, he thought there was a way to compromise those issues, and he often took a very strong stand to make sure that people believed in the Union. Um, and I think he uh, was probably was uh, be is best known for those stands. And he helped prevent the expansion of territories, um, slavery into territories, and California and New Mexico became states during his brief time as president. Unfortunately, uh, Baton Rouge has not always remembered uh, Zachary Taylor. Uh, Zachary Taylor you know, was born in Orange County, Virginia, grew up in Kentucky, and was spent most of his career in different military posts around the country, uh, primarily in the Southwest. But he chose Baton Rouge as his home. He liked Baton Rouge. He uh, had a home here. His family had grown up here, uh, had spent time here. And so um, it's interesting enough that the place that he chose, we often forget it. I think it's probably because his um, uh, presidential uh, career was so short-lived. Uh, but at the time of his election and the time uh, that he had uh, was served as president, and 
truly at the time of his death, uh, Baton Rouge was very close to Taylor. In fact, we lobbied hard to get uh, Zachary Taylor buried here in Baton Rouge. We felt like this is where he loved most of all and he would have liked to have been buried here. Uh, most of the home site is now occupied by a welcome center to the Capitol Park. But you'll find a Zachary Taylor Parkway uh, in the state, Zachary Taylor schools and Zachary, Zachary Taylor streets and avenues. But we often forget his birthday of November 24th and um, uh, I, I think we probably should remember him.